2003 was a year of the unexpected. On a somber note, after 100 years of life and laughter, we sadly lost entertainment icon Bob Hope. The year took a turn for the surreal when action hero Arnold Schwarzenegger became the governor of California. And ubiquitous party-loving heiress Paris Hilton and pal Nicole Richie tried to lead a simple life. The year in fashion was equally unexpected with sleek gowns paired with motorcycle jackets and the classic Guito monogram exploding in cartoon colors. Now, the best of 2003 from the runways of the world. Master showman John Galliano proved himself again with a vibrant Bollywood spectacle. Betsy Johnson brought us to her little heaven in the Hamptons. I just knew it was time to do something special here. Only Alexander McQueen could make a woman long for a beautiful shipwreck. You know, the movement of the, the chiffon and the gauze and things, you know, moving like waves in the water. And I mean, it was just incredibly beautiful, but very subtle. Go on to the set with the busiest model around, Giselle. I'm really tired. You can tell, right? No. Yeah. Most fashion designers celebrate the beauty of woman. The Met took it a step further with an exhibit worshiping the goddess. The feminine ideal that is manifested in goddess dressing is something that women are craving. What will we be wearing when the weather warms? For spring, designers provided many options, from the practical to full fantasy. Here are just a few to get you started. Gold medal moments triumph, from stylized track suiting to racing stripes. I think um, the athletes are our new superstars. I mean, they're just as glamorous as rock stars. <laughs> I see sportswear is coming all over the world, and they have left the locker room. In one word, sportswear. Be a good sport. Much of the Far East traveled throughout the fashion capital. Mandarin collars brought a sweet edge to the Prada collection. And decorative Asian embroidery depicting dragons and cherry blossoms came front and center. I loved all those Asian uh, prints and embroideries because there's a sort of sweetness to them. Hoping that the economy will turn around, designers cut lengths in half this season and showed thigh-bearing skirts and dresses. Short is a huge trend on the runway. In London, Julian McDonald gave a nod to neon. In New York, Tommy went for leather. And in Italy, Tom Ford opted for golden bands. Very short or very, very long. I don't like the middle thing. The Blue Zone, a voluminous shaped jacket, will prove perfect for unpredictable spring weather. At Ungaro and Claude Montana, the Blue Zone was executed in neutral colors of white and gray. Calvin proposed his in satin. More expressive takes were shown in Europe at Alexander McQueen and Christian Dior. Take a look back in time. At Prada and Max Mara, the 60s were apparent in subtle references to Perez with futuristic architectural shapes. But the all-time favorite period was to the simpler times and ladylike clothes of the 50s. You know, started out the season just wanting to make sort of womanly clothes. A lot of them 
sort of evocative of film stars and things like that, films past. There's shine everywhere, shine, shiny jersey fabrics, um, woven, everything has a luster, including the makeup. From textured knitwear to chainmail to space age, go for glisten. Oscar foot polish and day suiting. Prada's brocade will become a season favorite, and gloss satins were not to shy away from. Color, the bolder the better, will be the way to go. And don't shy away from prints with attitude either. Donatella Versace's layered chiffons were a favorite. At Celine, there was an ethnic appeal, and newcomer Esteban Cortazar drew upon the colors of his native Miami. But the most celebrated palette was Alexander McQueen's intricately cut Bird of Paradise dresses. It's a massive collection of many colors. It's a real spectrum of the rainbow. This time we put it into really bright colors. We kept the collection very rich. We wanted to um to be intoxicated by flowers. And by making clothes that are walking flowers, and for us it was like a camouflage to, uh, for, the, for our violent times. This season, the greatest show on earth had nothing to do with the circus, but came from the whimsical mind of British designer John Galliano. I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was so joyful and optimistic. And I think in you know, troubled times, it's been fantastic to come to Paris. What a show. <laughs> He's such a showman. And I mean, it's a, it's a hot ticket because you know you're going to be entertained. It was a major nostalgic trip for any of us who came from London and lived through the uh, 80s. Galliano was inspired by two icons of early 80s London club culture. The Bowery and Trojan. I mean, as you know, I was a student at St. Martin's and I would hang out with them and John Mabry and Boy George. And um, there was this wonderful time at Taboo where one was really expressing oneself um, through cultures, clothes, etc., etc. And, and there was this expression of just a complete joie de vie. He told you color is back in the biggest and the best way. I mean, the boy knows how to do it. He definitely told us what a new runway, how we have to feel it, smell it, see it in the air. I mean, he brought the greatest joy in fashion. So Trojan was one of the influences, and then this amazing work that's going on in Bollywood. You know, small budgets, great films. And I just thought it was really right for, for today, really, um, <clears throat> playing with these kind of very romantic, spiritual, almost diaphanous structures um, and volumes and that whole festivity and um, belief in God. I feel the clothes need that back around that theatrical setting to show them to the best. You know, we don't have advertising campaigns and stuff, so we have to make a statement. And I feel like the clothes sort of get lost in the show. I mean, I can recall all of the great gestures and the flourishes and the colors and the spectacle, but I'd have a hard time telling you, you know, what his collection really looks like. Having spent six months working on the clothes, Galliano and his team then had to figure out the practicalities of powder paint. Well, we had a little studio backstage, and I had my team there in white coats and masks. The whole thing was live. Well, of course, we worked out the colors and things, but before the girls on, we started to throw the paint at them, mix the colors, and then top them on with glitter. So that when they walked, this whole kind of nuage of color was. Um, I mean, it's just a moment that was the joy to watch. 
You came to see a show. You didn't come to see pieces. You came to see a show. 7.30, you're in Paris. You came to live again. Well, I thought it was totally brilliant, you know? What I said to John when I went backstage is, stand back, Jackson Pollock. <laughs> I'm not an artist, I'm a couturier. <laughs> The striking beauty of Shakara has been captured in the pages of Sports Illustrated. Her modeling career has taken her around the world. Her most recent stop, the Hampton Summer Retreat of designer Betsy Johnson for a very special event. I am sure you're wondering what all these girls are doing waiting here on the side of the street this morning. But check this out. This is the Betsy bus. I am Shakara, and we are on our way to the Hamptons to check out Betsy's birthday bash, her 60th birthday bash, and the premiere of her Summer Spring 2003 collection. So let's get on the bus, check it out. I'll see you in the Hamptons. I'm here at My Blue Heaven, Betsy Johnson's East Hampton hideaway. It's crazy in there. Let's go have fun. So we actually got a glimpse at Betsy rehearsing her infamous cartwheel with a splash and a twist this time. Let's go take a look and see what she's up to back there. She's acting crazy. Help, how would you turn it off? I just knew it was time to do something special here. And um, i just been working real hard the last couple months getting the house ready for this. Usually I worried about the you know, the clothes. This time more, I was more worried about just the production of it. We're backstage right now where all the madness and chaos and everything is going down. Charlie was telling me about the makeup and the festive colors and how sexy they look. So sexy. Well, it's become very patriotic now. It's sort of like red, white, and blue. The white being smile, you see. But it's Betsy's birthday. It's like party makeup, you know? It's like crazy blue eyeshadow, blue mascara, and then this red mouth. And at the last minute, I'm going to put a lip gloss over the red so it's shiny. We're here with Italo, the man in charge of hair. So he's going to tell us a little bit about the inspiration for today's show. Every time it's exciting because it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. You know, with Betsy, you never know where you're landing. This time we're like la Betsy land. You know, it's yes. like flowers. Did you see the house? It's, it's like fantastic. Hansel and Grado. With the collection, she's doing a retrospective of the 80s fabrics and the 80s pattern. For the hair, I'm not going to respect that. I'm just going to do glamorous, shiny, wavy, you know, sexy hair. And it's always a pleasure to work with Betsy. She's a living inspiration. So what are some All of your these little stories. Oh, the house. The, the house. house the, the, I think the idea that I wanted to do my birthday party here, and I'm not a social animal. I, this is the first time I've had people to my house. Really? But I just thought if I could get it really cracking the way I like it, then I'd love to show it to everyone because it's kind of a trip looking at all those little things that I've just collected and collected and, you know. Do we get to take a peek inside? Yeah, come Can on in. take a sneak peek yeah, inside? Let's go check it out. We're going in. The house is all about, it's a special, it's, I made it up. <laughs> I made a whole new 90-piece collection for my birthday party. You know, I just wanted to do that. I love the canopy beds and the lace so much, I decided to make a whole dress out of the antique lace pieces. Oh, this is Jacuzzi Land. The non-stop celebration continued around the pool, where Betsy's collection got drenched in summer fun. I said, but you know, I gotta wait till the big one. And um, I just felt I could do whatever I wanted on this birthday. Every season, an accessory makes an impression on the minds of fashion followers. 
past seasons included the Fendi bag or the Prada bag. This year's standouts are the bags designed by Marc Jacobs and Takashi Murakami for Louis Vuitton. You know, every season he has an artist come in and they design and collaborate together on the bags. And this season it's Takashi Murakami, a Japanese artist. We gave to him to the mono, new, new, you know, dummy and new monogram. Gosh, is a wonderful man with a great, I guess, a great uh, sense of life. You know, I love his pop sensibility. For the spring 2003 season, a favorite look for hair was a slightly messier take on 60s style. Bridget Bardot, very sporty, French, cheeky, glamorous, casual, sexy, 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 sexy. Sexy, easy, a um, little nod to the 60s, but not over doing like a retro kind of thing, but it's like how a girl might just whip up her hair and leave some bits around, very sexy, very easy. What we're doing here is a bit of a Barbarella long hair type moment. The girls are meant to look obviously very sexy, but then the hairstyle is uh, destroyed. So the whole atmosphere is the atmosphere of a, a party. Makeup artists at shows spanning the four fashion capitals focus their creative abilities on the eyes. So it's all about the eyes. The predominant theme was a smoldering, smoky eye with emphasis on liner. It's like a sexy eye, gorgeous skin, nice smoky brown, browny black eye. It's just like, you know, the way girl, women want to look. We're doing um, an amazing black eye for Diesel Style Lab. They're meant to look like it's, it went out Saturday night. And then this is Sunday morning, so it's a bit slept in. Pencil the black under the eye. Like. But the eyes are very strong and very modern. There's just tons of black mascara and black line inside the eye and a strong brow. So all the focus is on the eye and the intensity on the eye and the skin and the lips are completely clear without anything. Else. We're doing kind of a Roxy music feeling on the eyes. So it's um, very shimmery, metallic on the entire corner on the eyes. And on the outside corner, we're using a very dark grey. There is a tiny flavour, I think, of 60s. There were also many modern artistic touches. The eye is very powerful, very strong. So there's like a smoky eye, but done in a glitter kind of way. I like sexy women. And I think the sexiness comes really from the eyes. The most coveted clothes of the season came from the master of creativity, Alexander McQueen. It's very rare when you stumble upon that kind of um, genius and creativity and vision. I was completely blown away by Alexander McQueen last night. Oh, I thought it was like one of his really most brilliant shows. Makeup and hair reflected the spirit of the collection. First look was a shipwreck look, so it was very oily, close to the head, a little ravished. And then the second look, we sort of wanted something a bit spooky taken in by these strange sort of like creatures. And then the last one, which was sort of down and sort of floaty with a frizz at the end, I came to that because I kind of wanted the sort of a connection between them. With 2,500 people in attendance, McQueen skillfully crafted a multifaceted collection that began with a sorrowful shipwreck. It was like a 
based on the film The Mission with Robert De Niro and this like the journey from to like the ship and uh, it's got uh, Romeo and Juliet in it and the girl goes overboard and the guy saves her but he gets tangled up in the queen dress and they both club it. He started the show with this idea of the shipwreck and you know the movement of the, the chiffon and the gauze and things you know moving like waves in the water and I mean it was just it's incredibly beautiful but very subtle. The 1986 De Niro film, The Mission, inspired the collection, and McQueen's presentation in turn influenced the John Mayberry-directed film that was running throughout the show. There's always just a sinister kind of vibe going through his shows, whether it's in the background, for example, the movie by John Mayberry, which showed a girl drowning and sort of being strangled by her, her dress as she sort of wafted you know, into the water. goes into the clergy and the missionaries they land and they find this land and they're, they're in their Amazon and it's like a mixture of all of it the pirates on the ship and uh, the clergy from the missionaries it was almost as these women who had crashed upon this island um, began to take on the personality of you know the, the island that they were living in by the end when those birds of uh, paradise dresses came out I think I was, I was astounded. I mean, I just thought it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. The, the prints are 26 colorways separated the prints and the, all the dresses were cut in the round. So uh, it was a kind of complicated and uh, technically to do, but you know, we pulled it off. Well, I thought it was really interesting to see what he'd done with like the birds of paradise kind of colors, because you don't normally associate McQueen with that kind of tropical um, use of color. It was kind of, it's kind of personal because I, I thought, you know, sometimes we should really look back to where we come from to start over again, especially in today, what's happening in the world today, which we should really think about the way other people have been living for centuries and like from year dot, and they seem to get along. Earning stellar reviews for the collection, McQueen was anything but insecure. I love to see a designer just really come into his own. He was so happy backstage and he knew he delivered a brilliant collection. For Brazilian bombshell Giselle Bunchen, collection season in Paris doesn't finish at the end of the runway. After the Valentino show this season, she was back at the studio for a Harper's Bazaar shoot. She also told us how she makes it through a long day. You drink a lot of Coca-Cola, any chocolate, any chips, and gummy bears, and then you get, from somewhere, you get some kind of energy, so. But I think we have like, you know, maybe like one or two more to do, so um, it is hard, you know what I mean? But, but at the same time, you know, I really enjoy what I do. I mean, I like my job, you know. Everyone that I work with is so nice, so it's kind of like, you know, it's not that I'm like working with mean people, that like I know everyone for a while, so it just makes it like a bit easier. Giselle may be the star on set, but it takes a team to create a Harper's Bazaar cover. Well, we can't do Harper's Bazaar cover without Patrick Marchelier. He has two or three assistants. We have Gucci Westman and Serge Normand, who do great hair makeup. We have um, Giselle's agent, Giselle's camera crew. Um, we have my assistant, we have a manicurist, there's a lot of people here. It's a considerable crew behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, there's only one person in front of the camera. It is working when you try to look at the camera because, you know, your eyes look tired and you have to try to look okay, but after a long time, you know, flash and stuff, you're like, I've been up since 6.30 this morning, you know, it's like 8.30 at night, I'm exhausted. But you try your best, and you hope they approve it. <laughs> ah! It's going up your bum. Sorry, girl. Oh, no, no, it's good. Good, good, good. Okay, can we do Polaroid? Yeah, uh, you're Polaroid, huh? I knew this dress would be great on her, and I knew this would be great for a bizarre cover. 
silver, silver, silver. It's great. I love this dress. Dolce and Gabbana. Just more energy in your eyes, yeah. I know you're tired, baby, I know. We love Giselle, she has so much personality. She walks in and she's ready to go. Karen, can I have a pin? No. You have to have light in your eyes, 24 hours a day. Don't forget, girl. Giselle, no, she's crazy. She's very together. She's very professional. And she's a great, great model. You can see in her hair. And uh, she understands the clothes very well. Now she works for a while. Now she knows the clothes. She loves the clothes because the clothes are fantastic. She's very focused. Uh, what she's doing, and uh, it's fantastic. Okay. Oh, she's the worst. She's <laughs> the worst. I can't stand her. Now, Giselle is um, just one of those rare rarities in, in this industry where she's smart. Not only is she dropped it gorgeous and has one of the most incredible bodies I've ever seen, but she's smart and she's extremely professional and she knows when. She's got the picture and she knows what she does on it. But even the best of the best start to feel it when they've been posing prettily for more than 14 hours. I'm really tired. You can tell, right? No. Uh, when you start a day is one thing, when you finish a day is another thing. You know what I mean? It's like... But at least at the end of this day, Giselle had secured the coveted cover of the March issue of Harper's Bazaar. Designers made it easy to sharpen up your fall winter wardrobe by adding just a few of the season's most desirable pieces to your closet. It's all about grown up glamour. The goal is to look pulled together, not overdone. Anything crock is a must-have item. This exotic skin takes on any shape, from a full-length luxurious coat to a sumptuous jacket in creamy caramel to silver metallic accessories. These crocs will surely up the ultra-luxe quotient of your wardrobe. But even a little crocodile goes a long way when it's the sliver of a belt or a beautiful bag. Faux or real, this reptile is causing a craze. associated with a Harley and the open highway, the motorcycle jacket goes uptown when paired with an elegant evening gown. Teamed with a flouncy dress, this once rebel staple takes on a stylish nonchalance. It's easy to take to the road in an exquisitely studded biker jacket or one of liquid leather. Motorcycle not required. may never change its spots, but you can. There are an abundance of animal prints in everything from lush leopard to sequin zebra.
A sexy snake print will shake up the humdrum of gray days. This is, without a question, a case of beauty and the beast. It's time to turn a nostalgic eye on the 60s, but it's no longer about bohemia and free love. This revival is all about futuristic shapes and cartoon colors of the famed decade, as well as the iconic symbol of that era, the miniskirt. You can also opt for the optical illusion of 60s black and white. This checkerboard pattern is sure to keep you in the game. This look may be mod, but completely with a modern edge. These are the winning looks for your fall winter wardrobe this season. The tour begins with New York Fashion Week, and one of the best collections of the season was also the most highly anticipated, Narciso Rodriguez. The backstage teamed with energy while the front of house filled with Narciso's celebrity fans. These clothes are perfect. They're sexy, um, very feminine, very womanly, but never over the top. Very classic. You never feel like you're revealing too much when you're wearing his stuff, so I'm anxious to see what's in store for fall. Narciso took the precise palette of black and white to a new design level. I've loved black and white since I was a kid. Everything in my room was black and white, and it's something that, that it, I think in, in very graphic terms. Uh, I myself am very black and white. There's a, not a whole lot of gray in there. Well, fall since 2003 is black and white, but it's mixed um, much more graphically within, within one piece to create little slices of black or slices of color within black quite graphic. Narciso Rodriguez had an absolutely lovely show. He's true to his development as a designer and instead of running in one direction one season, another direction, another season, let me grab that. He's building a foundation. He's building an image of modern romanticism. Every season I really study each, each cut, things that I've done in the previous season, learn from the last collection and, and go forward. It's really a study of tailoring and, and things that I love to do. The best show of the week was Narcissa Rodriguez, without a doubt. He took what he started for spring, that was a big success, and just worked it out further expanded upon it. The clothes are just so elegant. They don't try too hard to make a splash. They just look wonderful. His construction of his clothes is, is such that there's such a great sensuality to them. They move so beautifully and I think they, without calling screaming attention to themselves, and ultimately the person who benefits the most is the person who wears the dress. to be here. He always does such elegant streamlined collections which are great for real women who can look very glamorous but also go to work in these clothes and go out to dinner in these clothes. American sportswear, you know, at its absolute best. Russian model Natalia Vodianova has made herself a runway regular on the catwalks of the world. However, her life before modeling was far from glamorous. I was a very poor girl selling foods on the street, it's true, and uh, I know, doing, trying to survive, that's what I was doing. Then suddenly somebody came and said, Oh, maybe you want to go to Paris, and it's quite shocking when you are a Russian girl living in your town and think that you will stay there forever. In three months I was in Paris and doing stuff I couldn't possibly imagine I would do.
Just how many runways has she graced this season? I don't know, I don't count. I, I, I try, otherwise I will get tired just by thinking about it. What does her family think of her newfound success? They're really happy for me and their life changed as well. You know, they have, they have much better life and they don't have to struggle as much anymore. I try to help them. Despite her youthful looks, 20-year-old Natalia is also a wife and mother. Sometimes, of course, it's hard because you don't you don't see your baby a lot and it's but you know like everybody you have to take your chance and do what you gotta do i got a great husband i'm i got a lovely baby and they're all excited when i'm coming and it's all these big parties and no it's really cool what does natalia see in her future i'm I want to do it for a couple of more years and then I'm really dying for a girl. <laughs> so I want to have another baby. But for now, Natalia is busy enjoying her modeling career. I, I'm myself, I'm having a lot of fun and it's, I'm making money and um, I'm meeting a lot of nice people and girls are all great. The team label, Boudica, represented the best of Britain's avant-garde. And they made headlines this season with their first show in the tents at London Fashion Week. It worked really well for this collection because we, we because the collection was called We Sell Disguises. It's very much about we were kind of exploring the idea of kind of identity and how we how we're um, seen within this industry. It's a very professional environment that actually emphasises the clothing and the silhouette, and it's when it's appropriate, it's perfect. Women's role has changed in society, therefore your clothes have changed. You know, women do work in a, such a different way than they did even 20 years ago. You need to be comfortable, you need to move fast. It's about being, I, if I want to wear something comfortable, I want it to be really beautiful. And I want to sort of wear a crisp black shirt with a little jogging pant, but the jogging pants made in a really beautiful kind of Scottish wool and leather zip covers and, you know, and, um, you know, and then just maybe scruffy trainers or really beautiful high shoes. And We're kind of really focusing on this whole kind of notion of couture. In the past, um, they've done this fabulous sort of um, razor-sharp tailoring, but it's always been a wee bit dark, a wee bit sort of tough and aggressive, and perhaps difficult for a lot of women to wear or even fully understand. But I thought this season they'd managed to get that kind of cutting edge softened up with a little bit of romance, and it just looked gorgeous. It looked beautifully made, lovely fabrics, a lot of black of course, and that's Boudicca's sort of signature. But a new, a new step forward for them, I felt. Well, the details are really important to us. You know, we're not someone who's interested in just churning out clothes for the sake of it. At this point, what we do is smalling. We want to control it. We want it to be of a very beautiful quality. I mean, if we could, we'd have it even more so. We, oh, we're like, I think we both feel that what you see is only 70% of what we can do and when you know when there's more money you will see even more I have to say that one of my favourite shows was Prada, once again. So exceptional. Again, very clever. It's very ladylike. Exquisite. Exceptional. Exquisitely beautiful. It is 
only from the prestigious mind of Miucha Prada that one collection can succinctly sum up the major mood of the new season. I thought it was incredibly elegant, very, very sophisticated, and a really nice mix of sort of 40s through 50s and 60s, but not defined by those decades. I mean, she kind of made it her own. Just the way she really played with inside, outside, and, you know, what's dressy and what's not meant to be seen, you know, using the lining as the outer part and having little frayed hems. I thought it was amazing. I mean, I love anything military style and all those great necklaces made of cloth I thought were amazing. And it was like the Bolsheviks, but but are beautiful Bolsheviks. <laughs> What was beautiful was, was the coats, which had um, boat necks and drop shoulders. They had that 50s inspired feel, like car coats, but then they were um, fastened by tiny alligator belts. The superb crocodile gloves and a beautiful crocodile coat with no buttons, just one of a man's shirt and beautiful straight boots. And the way she took men's clothes but made them right for women without making them fussy. It just was such a knockout. Fantastic color coordination there. And also, there was so much crocodile in terms of those bags. Oh my goodness, how successful are they going to be? So I suggest all your viewers rush out and put their order in right now. It's actually quite a commercial collection, which I think a lot of people have been doing in Milan, going back to their roots and kind of reinventing, very strong on the runway, but take everything apart, and it's, it's very, very saleable, which we really need right now. Every time you see her new collection, you think, oh, I can't wear anything but that, but I don't have to wait. And everything I have looks like old, raggedy stuff. I don't want any of it anymore. I thought it was one of the strongest collections Mooch has done for a long time. It was just one of the most magical moments in the whole Milan week. I absolutely loved it. The Metropolitan Museum of Art's opening celebration of the Goddess Exhibition brought the most heavenly beauties under one roof. The worlds of fashion, film, and music all converged at the event that was hosted by the screen goddess herself, Nicole Kidman, with Oscar winner Adrian Brody on her arm. And a winter of Vogue and Gucci's Tom Ford hosted as well. The idea of goddess is also something that I think is really appropriate now because I think that women have come to terms with the fact that they can be feminine and powerful and strong and intelligent at the same time. Goddess, it's a woman that she's beautiful inside, she's goddess inside. I don't think so, it's about what she wears, how she looks. But something that when, you, you know, that light that comes from within can actually be achieved in it, then and only then it deserves the title goddess. A goddess? I mean, just, just a, a, a woman that, that, that's confident with herself, um, nothing overstated, very understated, and um, soft and beautiful. It's just about, you know, um, glorifying woman, really. The goddess exhibit shined a light on the glorification of women through clothes from ancient Greece to modern day. Classicism in design is an enduring method of worshipping women. Antiquities always inspire us, don't they? And um, you know, the, the notion of this goddess exhibit inspired by so much of, of the past, the, the Greeks, Grecian dressing, um, Madame Grey, and Versace, all mixed up is uh, really exciting. Classicism is always a great inspiration. 
The classic things never go out of fashion. I mean, trends come and go, but classic stays. The feminine ideal that is manifested in goddess dressing is something that women are craving. The argument in the exhibition about what constitutes classical dress is that it's the most uh, reductive approach to draping fabric over the body. It's not about cut pattern pieces, it's really about fabric doing what it wants to do uh, to cover the body. I really believe that classicism for most fashion designers today is something that's quite second nature. It is, you know, again, you come back to the body and draping the body is what classical dress is all about. The exhibition encompasses a huge number of designers. It starts um, with Fortuny. I think that's the earliest 20th century designer that we have. There uh, is a, certainly a large number of Madame Grey, uh, perhaps uh, the woman whose work epitomizes classical drapery. Then it moves very quickly into contemporary designers, and amongst those people we have Halston. The Alexander McQueens are extraordinary. Every great designer seems at some point to have addressed uh, classicism, uh, some more consistently than others. I'm hoping that the visitor, as with every show that we do here, will leave with the sense that uh, you can look at clothing and uh, if you think about it in a way other than does it like make me look good, it will yield a lot about our culture, our aesthetic uh, traditions.